Hi, I've been playing the Flight Sim 2020 for about 20 hours now. I've been using my MSI laptop with 1050Ti and i5-7300HQ. Now, this whole 20 hours I've been on a quest for more FPS, obviously. Now, I know in a laptop environment the options are more limited, but we just have to get along with this system now. Uh, I never bought this laptop to be a gaming machine, uh, n not for <laughs> heavy gaming, for sure. Uh, any gaming I can do with it is just extra, and uh, I finally got rid of the integrated graphics card with the 1050 Ti. So it's been a fine laptop. To be honest, I've been pleasantly surprised that the game actually works in this laptop, so I don't really have complaints, but I have found few restrictions, and at the very moment, the game has just one patch, and um, things like airliners give big FPS drop, so it's not fun, and so does all the glass cockpit planes. So I've been only playing the small airplane with the analog uh, indicators, those seem to work the best. Now when it comes to the laptop itself, if we don't go to the game settings yet, what can we do to get more out of the laptop and to be honest I didn't know anything about tweaking the laptop I just never thought I have to or this there would be any game that would inspire me to find out well this one did so one of the thing is of course getting eight more gigabytes of RAM so now I have 16 and in this game it means about five more FPS roughly I mean it, it really depends where you fly and all kind of things but I would say it's about five ish that you can uh, increase and the overall smoothness is increased just a little bit uh, many of the stutters and freezes still remain but you know it is what it is at the moment uh, and you know it really can't hurt to have more RAM whatever you do with your laptop uh, big boys go with 32 gigabytes, but I think that's a overkill for this system. I'm not sure, but I believe the bottleneck is somewhere in the CPU area, not so much in the RAM. Just a guess. Uh, another thing, and this is thanks to some of the guys who commented my uh, first video up this game. It really helps when you point out certain things. I've been monitoring, thing, monitoring them to myself, but when someone else says it, it just becomes so much more obvious. And one thing is, that my laptop was overheating a lot. It was hitting 95 degrees. And so I had to go and find out how could I cool it down. And undervolting was the thing that was recommended everywhere. So I did that. I undervolted the CPU. And the temps are something like 10 to 15 Celsius lower. And that is enough to make sure the CPU is not thermal throttling anymore. So that helps a little bit also. I don't have data how much it helps, but you know, it just looks healthy in the screen and well, there's no thermal, thermal throttling. <laughs> Hard word. Uh, to increase or make sure it's the 10 to 15 Celsius no matter what, I also got this uh, laptop cooler, two fans. To be honest, you know, like really honest, this is a piece of crap. I mean, it's so flimsy. I didn't even plug it in my computer. I mean, it looks so suspicious. I use phone charger to run it so it doesn't, you know, explode the entire laptop. But it does provide cool air. I mean, it does. It makes sure that I can run it 15 Celsius lower. I mean, it does provide that. And in many cases, I don't even need to use the computer fans to run it at maximum. It's always 10 degrees below the thermal throttling point. Now, to get more power, or whatever it might be, there was, of course, overclocking. Uh, the MSI has a Dragon Center where you can overclock it without any special tools. I've been using the MSI Afterburner and some other tools. You know, all of this that I've learned, I've been watching YouTube videos, so it's not like I invented this stuff and I'm not going to show you how to do it because there are people who can tell it so much better than I can. So if you find the topics interesting, just go go Google and find, find how to do these things. So I did some overclocking and I don't have data how much it helps, you know, in FPS wise, but it definitely can't hurt. 
uh, one other thing was to change some of the 3D settings so that the 1050 Ti won't uh, go in any kind of power saving mode. It's giving full performance pretty much all the time, non-stop. Uh, apparently that can help also, but uh, yet again, I don't know how much, but I've done all the things that I found just to make sure it's, you know, I'm getting all that there is available. And of course, the final thing is game settings. It's purely visuals against performance. I mean, it's it's quite simple. You want to find some kind of golden slider that will make the game run faster, and there is none. I mean, it's, it's no magic trick. With this hardware, you start from a medium. See? You start from medium, and you take down such as terrain level of detail. This has huge impact. Object level of detail. And everything between these two sliders is up to you. Something between low to medium. Some may work even at high. I mean, it depends. Volumetric clouds low. Texture result. Well, that doesn't make different. Anistrogic filtering, you can lower that. You can super sampling, put it off. Synthesis, low. Water waves, low. Shadow maps, lower. You can get rid of the terrain shadows and contact shadows. So it's going to make it faster and so on. Just turning this down or off. And in the end, you're going to have less nice effects and more FPS. I mean, th there is no one thing. It's all of this, and when you do this, do this, it's going to run faster. If you take a light plane at the outback, you can get even 55 FPS. Medium settings, it's maybe like 35 or somewhere in that range. And cities really depend. And yeah, well, that's pretty much the point of this video, just to show you that I've gone beyond the game settings and you know tweak the laptop a little bit to get the maximum performance out of it i don't know if i know all the tricks if you know some tricks that i didn't mention please comment below <laughs> i'm willing to learn uh, you know that's the thing and let's hope the game will develop into a more rich and better product it's really a promising start but you know you never know nowadays software things are just <laughs> it's a big quest for anyone that hops in a game that seems to be in a preview state or early access state, but it has been released as a full game. Right? I mean, I'm, you, you know what I'm talking about. But it has its amazing moments and the fact that the game runs with a laptop at that level of detail, I, I find it quite astonishing. I mean, to be honest, it, it is fantastic at times, considering just a laptop you know it's a goddamn laptop it's not a it's not a brute force gaming machine not even close and it's not even the expensive laptops it's like just next to the entry level and <laughs> damn nice anyways that's it oops help. i put some clips here and there how the game runs at the current settings and more ram and so on so there you go have fun go find your house and let me know if you know better tips so bye